so about a month ago I decided to try and learn Puppet Warp animations. Since then I have barely made 4 wallpapers using Puppet Warps, but I've already learned that it's the best decision I've made because it's so damn amazing. Hi, my name is Artemis and today I'm going to tell you what I learned in the last few weeks of my summer vacation without going through the learning equivalent of what is repeatedly smashing your head against the wall until it breaks. Now, my entire setup isn't what I would call professional, as a matter of fact the only thing required to do what I do is around 3 bucks for wallpaper engine on Steam because the rest is free. The next question I'd like to address is, but Artemis, what are Puppet Warp animations? Well, simply put, instead of having to struggle making characters move through needlessly complicated stacking shake effects, you can now just do this. Ain't it glorious? It is. I love it. The first thing we need to get out of the way is the disclaimer. This video assumes you already have a character template. If you do not have one or do not know how to create one, I did make a video explaining how to create one in GIMP. I'm also going to assume you are familiar with the wallpaper engine editor so I don't have to explain every button that's on the screen. Only the important buttons. There is also an official documentation from the creators of Wallpaper Engine themselves that you can refer to for additional guidance. So here it is, our starting point. I've imported the background of the image and the character template already. The first step is creating a skeleton. In order to do this we select our character template on the left side and scroll down on the right side. Then press Edit Puppet Warp. This will open a window with 5 new options on the right side. Spoiler, we will be using all of them. Press create on the geometry section of the wallpaper engine and it will basically read your character template and create the bones of the skeleton itself. We can pretty much leave this alone. However, I would recommend increasing the padding by a lot. Generally, I increase it to around 100. You will want to do this as well if you are planning on adding regular effects such as waving for the hair. If you do not increase the padding for this, then, well, stuff like this will happen. I think it speaks for itself. It's also important that your separated limbs, as we'll call them, are not attached in the geometry section to each other. This will really screw it all up if you're going to animate it, so make sure they are not connected. And if they are, go back to your image editor and increase the distance between them. Then re-import the character template back into Wallpaper Engine. Next, we'll go to the skeleton section. Now's the time that I regret picking a wallpaper with this many limbs, but I'm not gonna change it halfway. What we want to do now is connect our limbs to each other. What you need to keep in mind is that there is a hierarchy in the animations of the skeletons. If bone B is connected to bone A and bone A starts moving around, that means that bone B will automatically move alongside with it. So let's create the connections real quick. Next up, we will attempt to reconstruct the original image by placing the bones in the correct position. Press the reference pose on the right side and start putting it all together. If it all gets too clustered and you do not know which bone you are selecting, remember that on the right side you can see the name that you gave to the bone.
the perceptive among you may have already noticed that the image doesn't exactly look like we wanted it to. This happens because the wallpaper engine creates an estimation of the depth for the limbs. In my experience so far, it gets it about right 60% of the time, but the rest is up to us to fix it. So next up, let's talk weights. Go to the weights tab on the right side of the screen. You will be greeted by this. Now, this looks a whole lot more complex than it actually is. Essentially, every bone has its own color. The colored areas dictate what part of the image moves when the bone allocated to that color moves. If you have created a separation between all your limbs within your character template, then generally you can leave this as is. What we are interested in is the bone depth. Select the bone and on the right side you'll notice a lot more options appear. The one we are looking for is at the bottom. Every bone is given a depth score. This depth score determines which bones are on top of others. The highest number is in the front and the lowest number is in the back. If you have a bone that should be behind everything, simply lower this number and it will fix the problem. Now that we've done all the setup work, it's time to actually create an animation. Open the animations on the right side of your panel. You will be greeted by a window looking exactly the same as the one where you add effects to a regular layer. Select add to create an animation. A window will open asking you for three things. A mode, seconds, FPS and another optional one asking if you want to wrap the loop frames. Let's quickly go over these. First, loop. This option makes the animation play in a loop. Who would have guessed? Optionally, you can wrap the frames if you choose this option. If you want to make an animation that repeats itself, you'll want to choose the loop option and make sure to enable wrap loop frames to let the wallpaper engine automatically create a smooth loop of the animation. Next up, mirror. This option makes it so the animation plays out and then reverses itself. And finally, single. This option makes it so the animation plays only a single time. Personally, I don't see a use for this option. However, if you have an animation that you want to play once and only once, this option is the one for you. By now you've also noticed the window in the bottom. The first time I saw it, I had no idea what I was looking at or how to begin, so I closed it all down. So, in order to prevent that happening to you, let me explain the things you need to know about it to work with it. The timeline. In the middle of the screen you'll notice a big graph. This graph shows the movements your selected bone makes whilst the animation plays. The longer the animation, the more frames you'll have. The numbers at the bottom are the specific frames in the animation. The numbers on the left simply represent the change made. Movement that happens within your animation gets displayed here. Auto keyframe. If I recall correctly, this option is enabled by default. What this does, when it is enabled, is automatically create an animation of the movement you made when you move a bone. Personally, I prefer to turn this off, so I don't have to delete a keyframe every time I touch a bone. If you have this disabled, another two buttons will appear on top of it. A key with a plus and a minus symbol. Here's what they do. When you press the plus button, Wallpaper Engine looks at the current position and size of your bone and saves that state to the frame where the yellow arrow is positioned on the timeline. When you press the minus button, Wallpaper Engine removes any saved positions and size changes that are on that specific frame. You can also select the colored boxes on the timeline and simply press delete. With all that explanation out of the way, 
let's create our first movement. What I want to do is create an animation where the arm moves around in a perfect loop. So let's drag the yellow arrow on the timeline to the middle of our animation, which is the 30th frame. Then I select the bone and I move it to the position I want it to be. Press the add keyframe button and let the wrap loop frames option do the rest of the work. And voila, this arm now moves around. Now, to apply this animation to your character sheet on your actual wallpaper, go back to the left side of your window and reselect your character template after pressing confirm. You'll be back at the original selection for your right side window. Scroll downwards until you see the Puppet Warp animation box. Press add and the window opens up with all the animations you've created. Select your animation and a new menu will open with three options. Rate, Blend and Additive. Rate determines how fast the animation plays. Blend determines how strong the movement of the animation is. And Additive must be toggled on if you are going to add more than one Puppet Warp animation. If you toggle this off, all other Puppet Warp animations will simply not play. So if you add another animation and suddenly everything stops working, make sure you toggle this on. And that's actually the basics. Repeat the process of moving bones and adding it to the keyframe to create your perfect animation. I will play a sped up video of me creating a few animations so you can see this play out in more detail. Before I do that however, there's one last thing I want to show. Earlier in the video I showed you a clip of movement where I dragged the hand around and the arm automatically moved with it. Currently, if I try to replicate this, the result will be unsatisfactory. So, for my final departure of wisdom for this video, let's talk kinetic warp. Go back to your Puppet Warp window with the Skeleton and the Weights option. Open the Skeleton window again. Then, select the bone that is most outward on the arm we want to move. Select the Edit Constraints on the right side. This will open another menu. Open the menu in the middle and select the Inverse Kinetic Arm Slash Lag option. Then press OK. Now, go back to the Animation menu. Then, select the bone you changed and move it around. And, like a magic trick, Wallpaper Engine simulates almost near perfect limb movement. You can create animations with this the same way you do any other bone. But, something I discovered while toying around with this, always use the bone that is the most outward of the limb as the kinetic warp bone. One last thing I want to mention. If you made an animation and you change something about the skeleton, there will be a good chance that there is something wrong when you open the animation again. Not to worry, this has an incredibly easy fix. Make sure your yellow arrow is on the very first frame of your animation, which will almost always be zero. Then, go to the right side of the window and select the default pose in the menu. This is the reference pose you made a while back. Then simply press load and you'll notice that whatever was wrong with your character template should be fixed. Now, as promised, here's a quick time lapse of me creating a few animations using Puppet Warp. And there we go! We've created a basic looping animation of our character. From here on, you can add many more effects to your liking. For example, you can add a shine to the eyes for some lighting effects, or a water waves to create a flowing movement in the hair, water ripple to make the magic in her hand a bit more magic-y, or even a rotate to make it rotate around. However, these effects should be applied to the regular way, and are not related to Puppet Warp, so I'll leave those out of this video. 
let me know if you have any questions or if any issues arrive and I'll do my best to help you out. I'd also like to mention that I'm also still learning the magic of Puppet Warp and if you have any amazing tips or tricks you'd like to share, please let me know in a comment. Once I have more tricks up my sleeve to show you, I will most likely follow this up with another video to show you more. But for now, this is all she wrote folks. Thanks for watching and good luck with your wallpaper.